Standing in front of the Human Rights Building, seat of the European Court of Human Rights, the judicial body of the Council of Europe. Inaugurated in 1995, this edifice is the work of the British architect Lord Richard Rogers, who also designed the Centre Georges Pompidou in Paris and London's Millennium Dome. Note the building's threefold symbolism. From the side, it looks like a ship moored on the River Eel, which flows through Strasbourg. From the front, its two cylindrical chambers evoke the scales of justice. The building's liberal use of glass is a metaphor for transparency. Let us take a look inside the Human Rights Building, which in 2015 was awarded France's Architecture Contemporaine Remarquable label, recognizing extraordinary contemporary architecture. As you enter the foyer, you will notice the functional and modernist style, which is also reflected in the three principal building materials, metal, glass, and the Vosges sandstone. The entrance leads to three separate zones, a public space, a suite of 18 meeting rooms, and an office area with 500 offices. These are for the 46 judges and the Registry of the European Court of Human Rights, which includes lawyers, translators and all administrative staff. The visit continues on the first floor where you will find the hearing rooms. Let us say a few words about the court's history. The court was established by the European Convention on Human Rights, the first treaty drawn up within the Council of Europe, which was adopted in Rome in 1950. Through its different articles, the Convention safeguards civil and political rights, in particular the right to life, the right to a fair trial, freedom of expression and freedom of thought and religion. It prohibits torture, slavery, forced labour and all forms of discrimination. As societies have evolved over the last 70 years, the Convention has regularly been supplemented by new protocols, such as the one abolishing the death penalty. Almost all cases brought before the court are settled through a written procedure. Some are decided in public hearings, which take place behind the doors which are opening ahead of you. In the hearing room, you will notice the wide circular arc which serves as the bench for the court's judges. In the centre of the room, one set of desks is for the applicants bringing a case against a state, defended by its representatives, who sit at the other set. Sometimes one member state brings a case against another. This is the only system of its kind around the world. Anyone who has exhausted all of the remedies available in their home country can take their case to the Strasbourg court. If the applicant wins, the court may sentence governments, ordering them to pay damages and compensation and prompting states to change their laws. The court's judgments are binding and their execution is monitored by the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe. The rows of seats at the back of the room are for the public and accredited journalists. From the small hearing room, you have a stunning view of the Palais de l'Europe and the European Parliament. As you leave the building, be sure not to miss the segments of the Berlin Wall donated by Germany. These concrete slabs serve as a reminder of the Cold War. They also symbolize German reunification and the hope of European peoples of thriving together.